But Hanuman, he's, I mean, when he's a Yoda, and he's, you know, he, uh, he is desperate to have service. He doesn't want to enjoy all the, uh, you know, urban killings and like that. He only feels happy when he can do some simple service. And there's a whole leader where finally, uh, because it's very difficult for Hanuman to get service, because now, I mean, in the forest, Everyone, I mean, they, Hanuman was there, and there was, they, they were just there, and they were serving constantly, and they were doing, I mean, enormous service. Hanuman was lifting mountains for Lord Ram. But now, back in Ayodhya, there are hundreds of thousands and millions of citizens, and they all want to serve. Hanuman feels, feels neglected. But then, I mean, I'm not going to into that, but then in the end, after Hanuman, he made a whole scene uh, at one point. Uh, then finally got a very nice service that he should wake up Lord Ram every morning and then he was very happy. You see, that's, that's Hanuman's mood. Simply let me do something. Let me do little, little something, but something. So, uh, here it goes on. Pushpaka stone tastri bi, stuya manos javandi bi, vire je bhagavan radyan krahais chandra yo itaha. O King Pariksit, as the Lord sat on his airplane and flowers with women offering him prayers and reciters chanting about his characteristics, he appeared like the moon with the stars and planets. Thereafter, having been welcomed by his brother Bharata, Lord Ram Chandra, entered the city of Ayodhya in the midst of a festival. <coughs> when he entered the palace, he offered obeisances to all the mothers including Kaikei and the other wives of Maharaj Dasura, and especially his own mother, Kausalya. So that's, you know, a sign of the greatness of Lord Ram. He's not at all angry at Kaikei. He's, uh, I mean, there's, he's no, not at all, no resentment, no anger. He comes and he pays equal obeisances to her as to the other mothers. That's, you know, a, a great, that's the greatness of Ram. And uh, he also offered obeisances to the spirits of preceptors such as Vashishta. Friends of his own age and younger friends worshipped him, and he returned their respectful obeisances as did Lakshmana and Mother Sita. In this way they all entered the palace. Upon seeing their sons, the mothers of Ram, Lakshmana, Bharata and Shatrupna immediately ro arose like unconscious bodies returning to consciousness. The mothers placed their sons on their laps and bathe them with tears, thus relieving themselves of the grief of long separation. Fourteen years. I haven't seen them for fourteen years. The family priest or spiritual master, Vashista, had Lord Ramchandra cleanly shaved, freeing him from his matted locks of hair. Yeah, they don't like hippies in many times. <laughs> like clean shaved. Then, with the cooperation of the elderly members of the family, he performed a bathing ceremony for Lord Ramchandra with the water of the four seals and with other substances, just as it was performed for King Indra. Lord Ramchandra, fully bathed and his head clean slate shaven, dressed himself very nicely and was decorated with a garland and ornaments. Thus he shone brightly, surrounded by his brothers and wife, who were similarly dressed and ornamented. 650. Being pleased by the full surrender and submission of Lord Bharata, Lord Ramchandra then accepted the throne of the state. In other words, today Diwali is actually it's the return of Lord Ram and it's uh, uh, the throning, throning ceremony of Lord Ram. That's the day when Ram took over the kingship. So that's, you know, that's also why we're celebrating it. He cared for the citizens exactly like a father, and the citizens, being fully engaged in their occupation and duties of Bana and Ashram, accepted him as their father. And in Prabhat, he writes, purport, as I'll read, people are very fond of the pattern of Ram Rajya, the rule of Ram. And even today, politicians sometimes form a party called Ram Rajya, 
But unfortunately, they have no obedience to Lord Ram. It is sometimes said that people want the kingdom of God without God. Such an aspiration, however, is never to be fulfilled. Good government can exist when the relationship between the citizens and the government is like that exemplified by Lord Ramchandra and his citizens. Lord Ramchandra ruled his kingdom exactly as a father takes care of his children, and the citizens being obliged to the good government of Lord Ramchandra accept the Lord as their father. Thus, the relationship between the citizens and the government should be exactly like that between father and son. When the sons in a family are well trained, they are obedient to the father and mother, and when the father is well qualified, he takes good care of the children. As in indicated here by the words Swadharma Nidata Manasrama Kunam Nita, the people were good citizens because they accepted the institution of Varna and Ashram, which arranged a society in the Varna divisions of Brahma, Shatya, Vaishya, and Sudra, and the Ashram divisions of Brahmacharya, Krihasta, Manaprasta, and Sindhyas. This is actual human civilization. People must be trained according to the different Manasra occupation and duties, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 4.13, Tatur Vanyam Maya Sri Stamguna Kama Vibhagasha. The four Varnas must be established according to varying policies and work. The first principle for good government is that it must institute this Vanasram system. The purpose of Vanasram is to enable people to become God conscious. Vanas Rama Charava Ta Purusena Para Puman Vishnu Arat Yate. The entire Vanasram scheme is intended to enable people to become Vaishnavas. Vishnu Asha Deva Ta. When people worship Lord Vishnu as the Supreme Lord, they become Vaishnavas. Thus, people should be trained to become Vaishnavas through the system of Bhana and Ashram as they were during the reign of Lord Ramchandra when everyone was fully trained to follow the Vanasram principles. Simply enforcing laws and ordinances cannot make the citizens obedient and lawful. That is impossible. Throughout the entire world, there are so many states, legislative assemblies and parliaments, but still the citizens are rogues and thieves. Good citizenship, therefore, cannot be enforced. The citizens must be trained. As there are schools and colleges to train students to become chemical engineers, lawyers, or specialists in many other departments of knowledge, there must be schools and colleges to train students to become brahmanas, shachas, vaishas, sudras, brahmacharis, krihastas, manaprastas, and sannyasis. This will provide the preliminary condition for good citizenship. Varmas, Rama, Gunan, Mita. Generally speaking, if the king or president is a rajasi, a saintly king, uh, the relationship between the citizens and the chief executive will be clear. And there will be no possibility of disruption <coughs> in the state because the number of thieves and rogues will decrease. In Kali Yuga, however, because the Vanasram system is neglected, people are generally thieves and rogues. In the system of democracy, such thieves and rogues naturally collect money from other thieves and rogues, and thus there is chaos in every government and no one is happy. But here the example of good government is to be found in the reign of Lord Ramchandra. If people follow this example, there will be good government all over the world. So, that's, uh, uh, of course, there are many points also here. Uh, one point we can see, again, we're talking about what happened two million years ago. At that time, there was also a uh, Vanasram system, Vanasram society. Sometimes there are scholars who say that the caste system is a later emergence uh, in the history of India. But actually, see, that's not correct. Um, of course, uh, the caste system where one is born into a certain barn or a certain caste is a, is a recent thing. I mean, recent within the last couple of thousands of years. And that's not the original idea. But the idea of having a society divided according to uh, quality, nature, and uh, preference of work and so on uh, is uh, actually Krishna says it's eternal. Tatur van Yam Mayasri Stam Una Kama Vibhagasya. These uh, four varnas they're created by me and actually they are eternal. 
it's a it's an it's, it's an eternal system, it's sanatana and dharma. They actually sanatana and dharma but not from dharma are synonymous words. Uh, they it's a, it's eternal religion. Uh, and uh, it's also there, it's actually there in the spiritual worlds. I mean, what we see here, uh, Lord Ram Chandra and his citizens, is actually the spiritual world descending onto this planet here. So, in the spiritual world, there are also divisions of society. There's society, and that means also there are divisions of society, and there are uh, rules for how one relates between the different divisions of, of you know, society, how uh, elders relate to juniors and juniors to elders, how rulers relate to citizens, citizens to rulers, uh, brahmanas, you know, every, everyone, they are there. Of course, the spiritual world, it's not there uh, for, for, you know, keeping society in order. That's often we have the idea. In this world, it's for, we have to, in order to give structure to a very unruly uh, mankind, like uh, animals, cattle, if you can say that. So you have to fence them uh, in and you have to tie them with ropes and so on, otherwise they'll just run wild. So uh, many have the idea that's the only purpose of an ashram, in order to, you know, you need a strong ruler and then, you know, everyone should stay in their position and, and this way you have a peaceful society. But that's a very superficial understanding of what actually this whole Vanashram society is all about. It's there in the spiritual world, uh, and there it's there simply for personal exchanges. It's for, for the sake of variety, uh, or you know, uh, it's sake, it's for the sake of rasa actually. Rasa again means personal exchanges, and uh, Ram or Krishna enjoys different kinds of personal exchanges with different kinds of devotees. If everyone is the same, it's, there's no enjoyment. If everyone, and if there are no rules and so on, for, it's also, it just become one big merge, you know, <laughs> one, big, one, one big soup where it's, it's not... No spice. Ah, no spice. And no spices. The spice is there, there's a variety of people, variety of souls, and one has experienced different relationships with souls in different <coughs> categories. Like, you know, you know, Lord Ram, he experiences a relationship with his father, that's one kind of, of rasa. With his mother, it's one kind of rasa. He has his brothers, that's a different, that's another, that's a brotherly rasa. He has friends, uh, they are servants. There, there's a, there, there are women, uh, and there are women and men. Women and men are also there in the spiritual world. Of course, here uh, we are not really men or women. This is just our external dress. But there are still the same uh, distinction is there in the spiritual world. There are there are souls who have the mood of women. There are souls who have the mood of men, for the sake of different variety. And, and so all this variety is simply there to uh, increase, unlimited, the happiness and pleasure of the personality of Godhead and everyone else is also enjoying that. And uh, so the spiritual world is not a, it's just, it's not simply a place where everyone is simply, yeah, so just hovering around in happiness, bliss or meditation or like that, but it's very dynamic. A place of personal exchanges, and it's uh, highly it's, it's highly governed by rules. Actually, I had some someone who was objecting to that. There's no, there's no rules in the spiritual world. Everything is just spontaneous. Yes, it is spontaneous, uh, but it's a spontaneous following of the rules that guide personal interactions. It's uh, in, that, that's that's what, um, and sometimes. Uh, the, the highest, highest experience is uh, breaking rules and, and so on, but that also can be. I mean, that Ram doesn't. Ram, <coughs> Lila of Ram is actually the taste of a following the rules no matter what. That's, 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 that's the actual taste in, the, in, in Ram Lila. The happiness you experience, but, or the satisfaction you experience 
from, from following rules strictly, uh, no matter what you have to sacrifice, Lord uh, Dasarat sacrifices his life, still he followed the principles. So that's the satisfaction of following Dharma, no matter what. That's, that's a, that's a, a rasa in, 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 in Ram Lila, in Krishna Lila. That's also there, but there's, there, there, there's, there's a different, uh, a different experience also. There there is breaking the rules secretly for Krishna's satisfaction. So that's, a, and that's an even more enthusiastic experience. But that experience would not be there if the rules were not there in the first place. So, uh, so the other point is, it's, uh, of course that's a very confidential and very difficult topic to understand, but Krishna's relationship to, uh, to the cowboy girls on Brandavan, uh, whom we know the relationship is, is there, they, are, they actually are married to other men. Krishna has relationship with them secretly, illicitly, and that is, uh, uh, but it's actually not illicit because all women belong to Krishna. Yeah. Prabhupada makes that point. Uh, when someone said that Krishna is immoral, he said, no, one man challenged Prabhupada said that. And Prabhupada said, no, you are immoral. Uh, all women belong to Krishna. You still, man. You know, even your wife is Krishna's woman. You know, you have stolen a woman from Krishna. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so but, but still, it, this, uh, this experience is there, this enthusiasm. You know, on the, the secrecy and of doing illicit activities, Krishna experiences that. But that's only possible if the rules are there in the first place. If there are no rules, that can, so that means actually marriage are there in, is, is there in the spiritual world as a necessary prerequisite for the highest rasa uh, Krishna enjoying with other beings and wives. Um, and, but anyway, it, it, it's a highly uh, is a terrible, very difficult to understand topic. Nothing to be imitated by anyone except Krishna. Even Krishna can do that. No one else. Not even Ram. What to speak of us? Don't even dream about <laughs> doing something like that. Um, but uh, the, all the all the you know the Vanasram is the, is written there from the spiritual world. It's uh, you know, it is, and it's there for for Krishna enjoying, uh, it, it, for Krishna's enjoyment for him experiencing relationships, different relationships to different living, living beings. So uh, when Manasra is practiced in this world, not only does it give a good structure to society, that makes society prosperous and so on, uh, but that's not the real point. Because I mean, anyway, this. this we are just in the material world, it's a temporary place, we're just here on a short visit. Ultimately it's going to be, you know, this world is going to be annihilated. Who cares if it's uh, prosperous here or not, or not for that, you know. Sometimes as people want to save the world. Sorry, it's not possible. You can try as much as you want to save the world, but when Lord Shiva starts dancing his dance of destruction, you can have you know, it doesn't matter, Greenpeace can be there and whatever, it's not going to help, it's going to be fixed. Of course, when she would want to, we don't want to destroy it, you know, we have to, also, even Krishna's temporary property, we have to care for and so on. But, the, the real purpose of Nasrin is not to create a, an ideal situation in this world, this is simply a site, you know, you know a byproduct. The point is to uh, get souls involved in the in actually the whole culture which is found in the spiritual world and simply be, you know seamlessly uh, become part of this spiritual existence and how, how you relate in spiritual existence and, and so on. That's the that's the actual goal. Therefore, it's, uh, it's that that is yeah, that that is the purpose of the whole monastery. It's actually it's very deep when you get in, into into it. And um, um, so, but Ram, Lord Ram Chanda, he, uh, you know, he is the personality of Godhead himself, descending into this world. Um, Krishna says, Yada, Yada, Hi Dharma Shaklan, Yad Bharat, Yad Bharat, Abhuta Namma Dharma, Satadamma Namma Shadyamaya. Hum, whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious principles and a 
in an in increase in irreligion, at that time I descend myself. So he comes as you know, an incarnation after incarnation, avatar after avatar, to re-establish religious principles. It's the same personality of Godhead, Krishna, Ram, Vishnu, uh, and Bhamana, and Yushinha, and Matya, and Varaha. Uh, he comes again and again, and Kalki, and so on, they come again and again. And Ram, uh, he, he came, uh, different avatars come with uh, particular missions and particular moods. Ram came uh, to be the perfect king, to show perfect kingship and perfect rulership in this world. Ram Raja. And it's so famous, as Prabhupada points out here, that uh, even today many they are longing for the Ram Raja. It's especially Gandhi's. Also, it's a different party that was Ram, yeah, that has a, or it's just all politicians in India talk about Ram Raja. BJP. BJP. Maybe, yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah. So, but the, you know, if they, if they will be, want to be successful, they cannot want the kingdom of God without God. That's not going to happen. That's Ramana Raja. That's Ramana Raja. And, uh, that was just destroyed. Of course, it would, I mean, compared to Prabhupada, then he has a comment here about modern democracy. Probably we would be happier with Ramana Raja than modern democracy. But that's, I mean, then again, we're not political. We, uh, you know, we should stay, we, we, uh, we should, we should, you know, we should honor religion to state our politics, isn't it? That's you know, the principle. So we should not put our nose into politics. But that's not possible. Because, you know, you know it's, there's, uh, you cannot have a, an ideal world without uh, God consciousness and Dharma being practiced. That is not, that's not going to happen. It's a, it's, it's, and the ruler, he has to be a representative of Brahma, a representative of the personality of Godhead. Krishna, the Supreme Lord, is a real king. He is everyone's king. The kings are simply representatives of God. That is, and they should not rule. It's not their country. It's not their world as such. They are simply uh, representatives. They are agents of the supreme Lord. And the laws of the supreme Lord. They should be. You know, they should be executed. They should be followed. Dharma should be practiced. Then you have a, a you know, a perfect ideal society as perfect as as can be in this world. Everyone will be as happy as it is materially possible uh, and everyone will develop uh, God consciousness, Krishna consciousness, God and uh, Ram consciousness uh, and go back home back to Godhead after this lifetime. That's 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 the whole point. And uh, uh, so uh, yeah so I mean, there's good reasons to you know to always meditate on Brahm. Of course, uh, as Prabhupada he will point out here, we're living in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is the present age, present degraded age, which uh, the Vedic culture has completely crumbled so much so that I mean, many people are not, not even aware that there was a Vedic culture one one time covering the whole planet. Uh, they're only you know kind of remnants, just vague relics of it here and there, uh, what to do in this age of Kali. And, uh, but the Supreme Lord also is involved in this age of Kali, in this age, he, I mean, he came as Ram, 5,000 years ago he came as Krishna. Uh, 500 years ago, again, uh, the same personality of Godhead descended as, uh, uh, as Sri Chaitanya and Balaram, who is also Lakshmana, you know, Lakshmana, Balaram is the same, uh, came as Nityananda, and um, they spread uh, this, this whole uh, Sankirsan process, Sankirsan Dharma, which uh, will, even in this Kali Yuga, can make anyone who takes part in it make, make become fully God conscious, Krishna conscious, and when every, enough are uh, 
uh, adopting it. Uh, even then we can have a situation like uh, we hear about a Yogya and Ram Raja, even that can, can happen and be established uh, in, 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 this, in, in this Kali Yuga here. Therefore we also, you know, with the same personality of Godhead, therefore uh, again we will open the altar in a few minutes and we have, on the altar we have uh, uh, Sri Te Tanya Mahavu and Lord Nityananda and today they are dressed like Ram and Hanuman, they have bows and arrows. Ram and Lakshman. Oh, sorry. Ram and Lakshman. It's, uh, we have Ram and Lakshman on the altar. So, I mean, who are Lord Titania, Lord Nityananda? Same persons. And, uh, of course, uh, even though it is the same, uh, same personality of Godhead, uh, according to the strict principles of worship, uh, like we have here, still we, we, we don't mix uh, the moods of the different incarnations. Like uh, Krishna has a different mood when he come, when, he, when when Krishna comes, and when he uh, when same Krishna comes as Ram, he has a different mood, and comes to Dr. Chanya again, it's a different mood, and one should not mix them because that disturbs him. You know, we here for, for living for the satisfaction of of the personality of Godhead, and we have to serve him in the particular mood that he has adopted. One should not, uh, you know, come with a different mood. That's called Rasa Bhas. But also, uh, this is not a disturbance to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, because they are also, and we know that from the scriptures, they are they, they were also celebrating uh, all the different festival days, such as Diwali, such as Ram Vijay, and in those days, um, Lord Taitanya and Lord Vijayan, they would dress up like Ram, Lakshmana, and uh, some of the devotees would become the monkey soldiers. And then they would, you know, and Lord Taitanya, he would with great anger uh, get up, and, you know, get up and, you know, start climbing up a wall and say, you know, where is this Ramana? We want to kill this Ramana. So they are. Uh, the kind of playing and acting the pastimes of Ram. So it's, 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 there's, no, there's no disturbance, Lord Itania and Lord Nishinanda very much enjoy being also in the mood of uh, Ram and Lakshmana on the appropriate days. And they are the same, so uh, you, we can worship, we have Ram and Lakshmana on the altar today, which we always do, but today they are in the mood of Ram and Lakshmana. Worshipping them, uh, then we will also experience Ram Rajya. Any, do you have any questions, any comments? What was the relationship with Ram and Sita and why finally he gave up Sita? Why Sita is very banished sad. to the forest? Uh, as an external and an, inter and an internal reason. External reason is to set a perfect example that the king must be above suspicion. And even when, I mean, his wife, Sita, is completely faultless, but um, some citizens are doubting his character and he's not able to uh, rule them properly. The purpose of the king is to rule and protect the citizens properly. So if something is, is hindering that, then he has to sacrifice that because that is his main, you know, he, that's, that's, his, that's, that's his whole duty to protect the citizens no matter what, like a parent has a duty to protect his children, the king has must protect his, his citizens. So, uh, when citizens, they doubt, they, they doubt even the character of Mother Sita and, this, and therefore they will not accept his rulership. So, for the sake of these citizens, and Prophets call them rogues and rascals, um, for their, but even for their sake, then he banishes Sita. Uh, 